welcome back to part three of our interview with Doug Sandler, where he tells us why nice guys actually finish first, as well as the lessons he learned from his dad, Dave Sandler, and the Sandler Sales Institute. Don't go anywhere. Part three is coming at you. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performance Performance Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak peak performer performer in any area area of your your life life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. I want to switch for a moment, and I want to talk a little bit about Doug the Entrepreneur, because Mm -hmm. you have come up with an incredible company. The lane that you're playing in, I think, is... I'm pissed off. I didn't come up with the idea, quite frankly. <laughs> what is that lane? I'm ready. I'm telling no, you what the, I do. the whole idea <laughs> about turning the podcast world on oh, its yeah. on its head and not going after the audience, but going after that that key uh, interview. I mean, that's just that's good stuff, man. That's Thanks. that's what fills the uh, the coffers. But I want to talk about you've been a businessman for the last oh that businessman. You've been a businessman for the last thirty years. Mm-hmm. Tell me about some of the things that didn't work out exactly the way they should have. I mean, you know, we all have the stories of, <laughs> yeah, this is working out great. I finally figured it out, but man, I've got some stories. W- what have you learned along the, 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 the process, the journey? Because so often I get, ah, you know, I feel like the old crotchety guy, you know, it's like, Hey, look, you know, if, if you haven't learned how to shave yet, don't come on the show and tell me what it's like <laughs> to be a, you know, a businessman, you know, yeah. get, you know, get, get some scrapes and, and bruises first. And, uh, 30, 30 years of it, your nose is going to get bloody, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> For the audience, you don't know. He actually suffered a, a nosebleed during the last interview. I don't know what happened there. I Somebody don't know. to punch me through the microphone. Well, you know, I get worked up here on this. Uh, my blood pressure gets going. All you got to do is like hit one of my like nerves, you know, like, uh, oh, right. I, I, no, I don't, I don't want to talk to clients. I, I just want like have a, a drip campaign that I don't even have to talk to anybody anymore. That, that gets mm. me going. That gets my yeah. blood pressure. Mm. So what are some of the things that you've learned? Well, I, um, I, um, I've been very fortunate over the last, I would say, uh, let's see, I'm 53. So I, I grew up in a house. I, I, I consider myself the son of the world's greatest salesman. I don't know if any of your listening community knows, but my dad was Dave Sandler. He created a sales system called the Sandler sales, Sandler sales Institute. Absolutely. Uh, so I grew up learning that it is okay to fail. And that was probably the best lesson that I've ever learned. And it's one that uh, remarkably so I have uh, done so many times over the last 30 years of building uh, my own business and working for companies. Um, I think that you you just have to recognize failure and just as long as you don't quit, you know, whatever it is that you're working on, as long as you don't look at that defeat and just say, I can't get back up again, I got to get back up. Uh, it, it, the attitude has always got to be you have got to continue on. Um, and, and that means that take the lessons that you've learned and just keep moving forward. You know, just don't be afraid to fail. We, you, we mentioned it at the beginning of this podcast and, and a couple of times since, if you're afraid to adjust and move on, you know, we created this turnkey podcast business and the, and the, uh, the initial process that we had was a failure. It was not something that we actually thought that, that actually worked. We pivoted and we moved differently in a different direction and we've been a success at this. So for me, there are so many failures uh, that I don't even know. I don't even know where to start. Every business venture that I've gone into uh, was a failure in the beginning. I mean, they, none of them came out of the gate, and it was like, oh my gosh, what a great thing that you got going on here. Uh, it's made me a million dollars, and I, I have I have lost more money, failed more times, and um, and been so um, uh, learned so many valuable lessons through that failure, those failures that, um, that I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. You know, so many people don't realize that success is not this line that, you know, starts at the bottom left and then just has this nice gradual, you know, <laughs> uh, progression up and to the right. You know, it, it looks like it's flatlined, you know, and then one mess. day it goes up like a hockey stick Yeah, and most quit before they get there. 
Yeah, yeah, and they quit right before they get yes. there too. So oftentimes it's right before you begin to experience that that level of success. That journey, that hockey stick that you were talking about for me in the podcast business was at that month 16 when we started to get into uh, into well into 2016 and we looked back at our 20,000 downloads and said, "Holy shit, we you know, why can we not grow? Why are we not monetizing 16 months into this? What are we doing wrong?" And it's when we changed our focus from our audience to our guest that you can see the hockey stuck, stick almost immediately uh, start going from uh, you know, 5,000 to 7,000 to 10,000 downloads a month to 20 to 50 to 75 to 100 to 110,000 downloads every month. And when we started hitting those kind of numbers, coincidentally, the money started coming in also. <laughs> and so I don't think there is, any level, there, there is any coincidence there. I think that it all is part and parcel of the process and that failure that we needed to go through in order to understand what we're doing wrong. There's a great book called Acres of Diamonds that explains this, you know, stopping right before Mm -hmm. your uh, your bucket of diamonds or your field (laughs) of diamonds. Great, great book. Quick little read, too. I think it's only, you know, I don't know, 50, 60 pages long. You know, you brought up something uh, earlier that I wanted to touch on as well is that, you know, so many people don't feel that they're salesmen. Right. And I always find that interesting because. The best salesmen don't sell. They allow right. their buyers to buy. Yeah. And they generally do that through great questions. Now, I'm really curious now, knowing who your dad is, what did you learn as a kid about sales? Shut up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what, I, that's what I learned. I mean, what I learned was shut up and listen. Uh, you, you, know, you, you, you only learn when you listen. You don't learn when you talk. You already know what's in your head. And you know, you're not going to teach anybody anything. Uh, you know, the, um, the example is that sales guy that, that works at a, at a local appliance place and, a, and an old lady comes in and, and the guy is so excited because he, he knows all of this stuff about this heater that, that he wants to sell this old lady. And he talks to her about BTUs and he talks to her about all of this stuff, you know, the, the, the consumption of, of electricity and the new fans and the moisture content that's in the air. And, you know, the lady is getting bored. And then she's walking, she begins to walk out of the, the store and the store manager says, ma'am, did you see anything that you liked? And she said, yeah, I wanted to buy a heater. She said, well, you we, we were talking to our best sales guy he knows everything about the heater. She says, I just wanted to know if it would keep an old lady warm. Yeah. You know, all of that shit that we go through in our day that we puke all of this product and we tell everybody all the great things that we know about the products and services. We're just telling them stuff just to hear ourselves, you know, diarrhea of the mouth. Shut up. Listen to what the problem is that you have to solve. Let them solve the. Let them tell you what they need from you, and then just fulfill the need. And it, the only way to do that is to ask questions and get the answers from your potential clients. And once you do that, and once you realize that, and you shut up and listen, you will close more deals than you and you can possibly handle, and make more money than you've ever had in your entire life. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> it's true. Do more listening than speaking. And I totally forgot my next question. <laughs> Got you Go so off, off track there with the old lady. <laughs> I know. It's gone. Well, it was oh, by, about by the way, Thor, as, as I was telling that story, I did write your review, and it's already up on Amazon, up, oh, on, uh, up on iTunes. So you're behind me now. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm remaining present. Of course, I can't remember my <laughs> next question, though. It was a really good question. I'm sure it was. <laughs> it had to do with sales. It had to do with speaking. It had... I'm lost. Uh, that's good. No problem. All right. Anything else about that? I, that's, I can't believe that's He's amazing. Well, it was a, it was a good, my dad passed away in 1990, uh, 1995. Uh, Let's see, my son was born in 96. So he was, he, my dad passed in 1995 and he was a, he was, as I make business decisions now, I think back to, I wonder if my dad would be proud of the, of the decision that I made, or I wonder if he would have appreciated this that I did in my life. And I, I find myself, even 20 years after his uh, his passing, I find myself still trying to fill the bucket that he would uh, that he would create with his level of expectations because he had some high expectations for his boys, and I, I feel like uh, between my brother and I, we we uh, we do our best every time we have to make a business decision on on doing what we think that he would have done if he were still here or, or how he would advise us if he was here on this earth. I, I lost my dad in 92, so very, very similar. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we always always look back and, and wonder. I remember the question that I wanted to ask you. Nice I'm guys ready. finish first. Tell mm-hmm. us about the book. Well, I can recall leaving my house at six years old and younger probably, but I can, my first vivid memory is being six years old and my mom always saying as I walked out of the door, Dougie, be nice. And it wasn't really until I started to to have business relationships that I really understood. I mean, certainly it's great as a kid and as a young adult and as a as somebody that gets married and and you know being nice is 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 a valuable um, trait to have. Uh, you know, it's a great attribute. But as a guy in business, um, so many companies, so many leader people in the positions of leadership and and higher ups within organizations see we uh, see um, being nice as a sign of weakness. That you're a yes man. That you're that you're willing to uh, to um, to bend, um, you know, t- too far for the other person. And I always look at it and say, I'd much rather have a person, uh, having left me feeling better about themselves as before they met me. So for me being nice is just, that's the kind of person that I want to be around. Those are the people that I want in my life. And those, you know, the law of attraction, you want people to be, uh, like you, if you, if you're nice, other people will be nice. So I constantly am finding myself in a position of catching people in the act of doing something right rather than of doing something wrong. And those are the same people that come back to reward me by building my network, that being great people within my organizations, that be that are great team members for me. Ultimately, the people that I surround myself with are other people that are nice. So uh, when I wrote Nice Guys Finish First um, back in 95, uh, 2015, uh, the idea behind it was to teach other people about the philosophy that I, that I developed for my entire business. And... Um, uh, there's a quote. I think it's on chapter one. It's it's uh, it's by a guy named Gary Shandling, who was a late comedian, um, and he says, "If you don't think that nice guys finish first, you don't know where the finish line is." And the reality of it is that most organizations, most companies, most entrepreneurs, they don't know where the finish line is. They don't understand that the power is all in being nice because it's not just about business. It's about building relationships. Better relationships equal better business. And I've just led an entire career that way. And I, and I feel it's, it's an effective tool in being nice. I can't agree with you more. You know, I've had clients that I've had for 20 years and you don't have clients for 20 years because you have the best service, the best advice, the best product. It's because they really love you. Mm, Yep. Yep. I want to create a lifetime, uh, clients that want to stay with me for a lifetime. And for me, that's the, that, to me is the way to do it is, is to, by being nice. I mean, that's just how I, that's just how I do it. Yeah. I mean, clients invite me to their Christmas parties on vacations. They're like, we're going on vacation. We want you to come with us. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, but be that kind of person that people want to spend time with. So Agreed. Doug, we could keep going on forever. Uh, thank you very much for coming on today. This has been really, really good. Uh, let the audience know how they can get in touch with you. And how they can set up a podcast. Yeah, awesome. Well, the the best way to get to us is just through um, our website, which is turnkeypodcast.com. And we actually have a um, a special info link set up on our website. I believe, if I remember correctly, it is turnkeypodcast.com forward slash peak. Would that sound right? Yes, that would. (laughs) <laughs> if, if that's the right website, just go there and uh, you can click on there. Pricing is right on our website. If you want more information, contact me in for uh, sheet is on the on the website as well. And um, yeah, you, you are certainly welcome to tune into our podcast, which is called the Nice Guys on Business podcast. But uh, turnkeypodcast.com is probably the, the best place for you to start. And if you listen to his podcast, make sure you leave a review. <laughs> we would appreciate that. There you go. Even though yeah. he's not looking for the reviews, you know, we know, but. We're going to leave exactly. him anyway. Yep, exactly. That's just the way we roll. Doug, thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> Thor, thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope you found today's show valuable. If you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer, simply go to iTunes and subscribe. After listening to several of the shows, if you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating, as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, send me an email to info at and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners 
And if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. You can follow me at Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time, doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.